A 10 year old walks out of my grandmother's closet. A mini Southern Baptist diva, too young to know what diva is, struts out. Hat flapping over her face, wicker bending to kiss the side of her cheek after every step, a wide yellow bow trailing down her back where one day, she hopes, her wedding dress would be. One white glove hand imitating a frantic fanning of the face, pearls draped four times around her neck and red lipstick smeared from ear to elbow, one of those Kodak moments. Good thing digital wasn't in yet. Too many things to erase and forget, eaten up by bad memory. First day of first, first, day of first grade, does it look like I want my brother's hand-me-downs? I am too patent leather Mary Janes and Hello Kitty for that. My mother, my mother would dress us in the same Save Mart clothes the entire neighborhood wore. I would always find a phone booth on my way to the bus stop, peeling back jackets she was waiting for me to grow into, jeans not too trendy, not too tight. At recess, we were already practicing hairstylists and clothing designers, switching tops and ideas. Scissors, the original five-in-one tool, turned sweatshirts into miniskirts, a perfectly good pair of tights into fishnet, recombing and twisting each other's hair on the steps while boys ran in circles chasing dust. College, my brother's old fatigues turned patchwork skirt, Afro and Angela Davis t-shirt, had people clutching their purses like they were running back trying to make first down. It's Kinko's, people. I'm just trying to copy my chat book, for Christ's sake. Wanted to get my word out to the people, let them know the revolution was coming, and me wearing my brother's fatigues 24 days straight, symbolized my quiet protest until they sent those troops home. Want them soldiers to know they was off fighting something they didn't understand or believe in my brother. My brother lost his life three days after being sent off to war. Decided his government issue nine millimeter tastes better than cold turkey on rye that day for lunch. No note, no nothing. Just some orderlies to clean up his remains. Chunks of his brain tissue caught between the fibers of the mop and the sponge gives new meaning to driftwood. On vacation, on vacation, my white parents tried their best to play color mats with their Negro child. They were hippies, flower children, caught between the movement and privilege. Adopting me, they said, was their effort to try to save the world. Well, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Lucky for them, their color would fade. Right here, right here, right about now, we are all 21 years old <laughs> and holding. Forgive me for not sounding or looking like you expect me to. There are two type of people in the world, me and everybody else. The awesome thing is you can repeat the same mantra. Find yourself a compact, a rear view, or dark windows on the building as you're speed walking through lunch. Repeat three times daily and call on me never. This is the part of the poem where I'm supposed to tell you why. No, shouty. This is how it's always going to be. I'm always going left when the world says north. I'm always wearing plaid and polka dots when salads are in. My cadence will always be rocker beats hip hop before life support. And I will always... Want to slip my wrist after a bad breakup. But I won't, because I'm too fly, and that's simple. And this poem is about you and I, and how it seems to be a cardinal sin for us to think that we're great. Well, I happen to look up the word cardinal. Much sought after cage bird, highly valued for its song and color. Look, life is like masturbation. Do you? The trick is, the trick is, not to believe that you are better. Not to believe that you are better, but never believe you're worse. Go. Give thanks and praise.